Hello, good afternoon, oh, good weekend, should I say? Good weekend to all. Uh, it's a deal for Zahir Market Analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for Monday's trading session, the uh, 3rd of uh, uh, July 2016. Okay, so in terms of the markets, so uh, we certainly have had a stellar short squeeze, folks, and a very, very uh, impressive short squeeze at that on the back of obviously stimulus and QE potentially coming down the pipeline. Be sure to visit tradesignaler.com signals and market updates from leading providers at uh, www.tradesignaler.com. You can download the app at Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so in terms of the markets, we, the FTSE itself certainly has recovered, uh, a stellar recovery, a very impressive recovery. I mean, if I bring up the chart of the FTSE 100 just on a daily perspective, and you can see after hitting a pivot low post Brexit of 5790, uh, I think we uh, actually were low at one time after hours. And the market certainly has bounced back and broken out all, all resistance zones in the back of Mr. Carney, potentially cutting rates and obviously offering more QE. Now, yields obviously are collapsing globally uh, on the back of that. Uh, more stimulus potentially from uh, the uh, ECB and obviously the US uh, are on a hold in terms of raising rates, etc. And cheap money and uh, potential or hope of more stimulus. Uh, people are obviously uh, trying to front run that. And this is hence the reason why we've seen this bounce. And this bounce has been... A very impressive look at that weekly chart folks i mean a weekly candle at 5960 pivot low to a high of 5580 i mean that is that is a move i mean that is some move that's almost a six seven hundred eight hundred point move very very impressive bring up the german dax i mean look at the dax as well i mean it's screaming higher looking at the daily chart the german dax itself you've had a pivot low of 9222 and obviously we pivot high, pivot high of 900 so you've had almost a 600 point rally in the german dax as well Although having said that, compare it to the actual FTSE 100, it certainly is obviously lagging, lagging, and I'll certainly discuss that as well. But having said that, the FTSE has been very impressive, especially given the fact that we've got Brexit uncertainty, political uncertainty uh, going forward, and yet the market's totally oblivious to it. Yet they are totally ignoring the uh, risk off uh, potential factors. Uh, you do have obviously resistance here. Previous support equals resistance at this key zone at uh, 6580. Okay, so watch out for that. But yes, market participants are totally oblivious to the Brexit risk, uh, the political uncertainty with regards to Labour and um, and obviously the uh, Conservative Party with uh, Miss Leedsom now, uh, apparently a leading candidate. Uh, the latest article from Reuters at present, we have um, Leedsom candidate to lead Britain will be quick to trigger Article 50. So Andrea Leedsom, one of five candidates to succeed David Cameron as British Prime Minister on Sunday, she would be quick to start the process of negotiating in terms of Brexit, Britain's exit from the European Union. So again, potentially bearish. So Leedsom, make a note of that on my whiteboard. Leedsom, trigger Article 50. Okay, so Article 50. Now the fact that Article 50 hasn't been triggered, there may well be uh, part investors and traders are, are, are potentially hoping for a uh, potential... Um, agreement in terms of uh, the single market etc and the benefits that the uh, uk certainly uh, receives from the european union and it wouldn't be uh, as harsh as a potential brexit brexit now she's certainly saying uh, stating to the contrary as when she would trigger article 50 a step that will formally begin the process leaves and decline to give an extract framework but made clear she thought it should happen as quickly as possible we need to get on with it we need to seize the opportunity it's about giving certainty business it's about saying to the world we are open for business let's start getting some free trade agreements started as soon as we can we need to get on with it we need to get a grip and make progress leads of a prominent campaigner for a, for a leave vote ahead of the june 23rd referendum has emerged in the early stages of contest succeed cameron as one of the strongest candidates from the brexit camp uh, theresa may who campaigned uh, for a remain vote may uh, may said on thursday she would not trigger article 50 this year so Theresa May versus Miss Leedsom. So we have two candidates. One is Remain. One is obviously uh, Brexit. Uh, generally believe on the trade with the EU. There are very strong reasons, both financial for reasons of links. We will continue to trade tariff-free. Hmm, interesting. She added that she was confident Britain could continue to trade tariff-free with EU countries after Brexit. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I genuinely believe in the trade with the EU. There are very strong reasons, both financial and for reasons of links. We will continue to trade tariff-free. I very much doubt that's going to happen, okay? Uh, oh, interesting. This is very interesting, the fact that she's actually stating. This is the latest tweet, folks. Uh, let's have a look here. So she uh, she basically states, and this is not exactly bull bullish, uh, Storm the Isle has all five contenders make pictures on TV. So they're all trying to didn't have what it takes to be PM. Okay, I, I don't want that. I'm interested in this. Uh, he refuses to take mr farage okay let's have a look at this uh, article here 
Brexit fallout, Andrea Leedson, Jeremy Corbyn make a peace pact with warning Labour MPs despite a report today denied Philip by his office that his uh, aides are blocking a meeting with his deputy Tom Watson, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so apparently Miss uh, Andrea Leedson refuses to rule out making Nigel Farage a government representative. That's interesting. So, Mr. Blair, you've got 80 40 percent of this country who feel quite politically disenfranchised, which is true. Young people, particularly, I think, feel angry about the result. They've been deprived of the future they wanted to our country or for our country. At this moment, I still think David Cameron has got an important role to shape how the rest of Europe is going to handle this uh, question. We should keep our options open. I'm not saying we should have another referendum, but it's the job of Parliament to express the will of the people and scrutinise what this deal might be. And that's true. Theresa May is still on ITV where she says it would be wrong to have a second general election because it would introduce a destabilising factor. She then moves on to talk about uh, her private life being poured over. She recognises people will want to look at things including a tax return. Will she publish it? I will do that. Mine's very simple and straightforward, she says. Michael Gove and Andrew Leadson made the same pledge this morning, so apparently they're going to uh, release their tax returns. So you've got Michael Gove, Theresa May, and Miss Leadson. So again, this is going to be interesting. You need to watch the uh, political fallout as well in the UK and again in terms of the FTSE. Okay, so that certainly seems to be the overriding theme, okay? Uh, the fact that we have QE, interest rate cuts, etc. is leading this FTSE higher. Uh, resistance in the FTSE is currently seen at this zone, which is 6580. If you crack 6580, the next resistance opens about 6810, okay? If you crack 6810, again, anything is possible here. We can certainly go, go break and, uh, and certainly move higher to 7100, okay? If we start to reverse and start to fall, sell off, then the next support is seen at 6450. That must hold. Again, if we get an unforeseen event, just like a, a geopolitical crisis or a socio-economic crisis, etc., again, a lack of QE, uh, even though it's been talked about, and obviously a U-turn in terms of the comments and economic data coming out week, etc., etc., terrorist incident, uh, any any type of geopolitical incident could certainly reverse the fortunes of the FTSE 100 and retest 6450, even if we have resistance or support at 6350, and then we can go back to 6000 again. Okay, so certainly very interesting. Going to the daily chart, FTSE 100, you certainly have support, previous resistance equal support at 6430, and the real test will be at 6330 zone, okay, in terms of the FTSE. But again, we certainly have broken about over, above all resistance here at 6450, uh, resistance at 6500 even. So again, a potential retest at 6450. If that doesn't happen, then obviously the next resistance at 6750 to 6810. That's the zone that we focus on, okay. Those are the zones that we're going to uh, be looking at and uh, uh, and focusing on. Okay, folks? Right. That certainly is the case at present. Okay. Now, in terms of the 60-minute chart, the FTSE 100, we're in this bullish channel. Certainly, uh, at the ascension, it continues. Okay. Lower, uh, higher highs and higher lows. Okay. 10-minute chart does have an unfilled gap below at 6480. So, again, a high probability of that potentially closing. We certainly have an intraday double top on the FTSE at 6580. So, again, that will be a zone that will potentially be looking to short, uh, given the fact that we've got these comments out over the weekend and the political uncertainty in the UK certainly reigns supreme. Okay, in terms of European indices, let's go to the German DAX. Again, I was looking at the daily chart and I was explaining to you that we're certainly lagging on the daily chart. So, the European market is certainly lagging its peers, which is a FTSE. Okay. Daily chart of the uh, German DAX at the moment certainly is lagging to a large extent given the rally in the FTSE 100. We're into that 50% on the daily chart. 60 minute chart of the German DAX, you're approaching that 200 MA, so watch out for that 200 MA, folks. That certainly remains key resistance, okay? Again, the Brexit gap hasn't closed, so bear that in mind. The Brexit gap still hasn't closed, still remains open, okay? So again, a lot of uncertainty in Germany, the uncertainty certainly reigns supreme. And again, looking to potentially close, okay? 10-minute chart, uh, chart on the German DAX. This is bring this up for you, give you an insight here. Okay, so uh, you previous have previous resistance equals support here. Uh, you certainly have previous resistance equals support here as well. Okay, so you're looking at potential support on the downside at 9745. Then you obviously have this uh, horizontal support here at uh, 9650. If that were to crack, then the next support you have is down at uh, 9. Uh, 580 okay and then obviously you have horizontal double bottom support around this 9500 you have an unfilled gap that certainly needs to close here 
So watch out for that potential gap if there's a flush down to 9450 and obviously 9250 as well. So from my perspective, German DAX certainly is looking weak here. Uh, you have this rising contracting wedge type pattern. Okay, so watch out for this rising contracting wedge type pattern, folks. Looking for a potential breakdown and test of 9650, 9660 zone. Okay. Right, okay, so in terms of the uh, European indices, let's bring up the um, CAC, uh, French CAC for you as well. Uh, French CAC, certainly an intraday double top, so again, that'll be an index that I'll be looking to short call going into um, going into uh, Monday's trading session, certainly looking to take advantage of that shorting opportunity. So European indices certainly remain weak from my perspective. You certainly have gaps that need to close below as well, so watch out for those gaps in terms of... TA, let's just bring some bring the TA into the equation here. Okie dokie. Okay, so again looking for that dual top, then obviously support down to that 4230 and 4200 zone in the French CAC. So certainly looks exhausted here. If you can hold the resistance at 4290, then you are looking for a potential flush lower. Looking at a 60 minute chart, uh, the French CAC is into that 200 MA, therefore remains resistance on the uh, on the actual 60 minute. And obviously you've got the uh, unfilled gaps below as well. So again, those unfilled gaps below will potentially act as magnets to potentially close this market. Okay, looking at the daily chart, the French CAC, we still haven't sold off, or we still haven't closed the Brexit gap. Okay, so all eyes on that Brexit gap. Uh, again, potentially looking to uh, close. Okay, so all eyes on the Brexit gap, uh, and certainly remains open at present with European indices obviously wavering. Okay, and certainly indicating weakness here. So you're into that 50% resistance. Okay, so watch out for that zone on the uh, French CAC. Last but not least, looking at the Euro stocks. Bear with me, also bring up the Euro stocks for you. Okay, so again, uh, let's just look at the large time frame first of all. So the weekly chart at the moment has certainly bounced to that potential double bottom. Daily chart at the moment still remains weak, even though we have held double bottom, so that certainly needs to be respected to a large extent. But European indices certainly lagging from that pivot low into that 50% resistance now. Looking at the 60 minute chart, you're into that 200 MA. Uh, the inverted head and shoulders formation, let's just calculate this inverted head and shoulders formation, which is quite important. So your IHS equals the neckline which is uh, here which is directly above the head so you're looking at 2810 minus your uh, 2810 minus your uh, uh, basically the head so your neckline minus the head so you're looking at 130 points 30 points takes it 2710 2810 so 130 points so you're looking at 2940 on the upside and we're not too far off okay so 2940 we're currently trading around the 2900 so again potential 2940 target on the upside okay so watch out for 2940 and will certainly act as potential resistance okay in terms of the uh, euro, euro stocks but again a lot of that hinges on the uh, the actual uh, fundamental news flow as well uh, the 10 minute chart certainly exhausted triple top scenario here okay certainly looking for a potential flush lower now okay that's what we focus on Okay, so that certainly is a zone to watch. Okay, so looking at potential support down into this 2850 zone. If that were to crack, you're bringing out the uh, 2830 zone. Okay, looking to move lower. So certainly a triple top resistance there on the uh, the actual uh, Euro stocks 50, okay, in terms of the market. So again, looking for weakness and looking for a potential flush lower. Let's bring up the chart of oil as well whilst we're doing our weekend analysis. Let's bring up the chart of crude oil. Okay, so let's bring up a chart of crude here. Let's have a look on the, on the daily chart of crude. Okay, so again, holding resistance up here. On crude so you're looking at resistance at around the 50.5 we're currently 49.3 so back into that resistance zone on crude a 60 minute chart of oil you certainly have resistance up here you have resistance here resistance here so certainly you go into that resistance zone okay so previous resistance equals support as well okay and again coming into potential resistance on the on the price of oil at 49.5 so Watch out for that 49.5 zone. Again, that will act as resistance and send the price of oil potentially uh, 
tumbling lower. So again, that's a zone we're going to watch out for, uh, which in turn obviously confirms the, the, the weakness in European indices. Let's bring up the chart of copper now. Okay, bringing up the chart of copper, 60 minute chart, so it looks exhausted now, daily chart at the moment, again, uh, we're in that zone, okay, previous support equals resistance, 60 minute chart, certainly a potential double top scenario here, and looking to potentially reverse, 15 minute chart, certainly a double top, so given the fact that the copper price has put a double top in, you are now looking for your weaker European, or should we say UK, European indices, and US indices as such as well, so global indices, uh, commodities certainly coming into resistance, uh, in terms of gold, gold certainly has pushed higher in the back of this, obviously, QE and stimulus talk uh, globally, okay, to a large extent. Uh, going to a four-hour chart, you certainly are into that double top, so you're not making a new high even with the additional stimulus. Uh, certainly has bounced to the 1260 level, though, so almost 80 to almost a $100 rally. And a lot of the stimulus would potentially be already factored in with a $100 rally in uh, gold, okay. So certainly keep an eye on that. In terms of the Euro USD, let's just bring this up for you as well, given the fact that, obviously, uh, uh, central banks such as the, uh, the US are certainly going to be refraining from obviously increasing rates that's obviously sending then also given the uh, uh, Brexit concerns certainly subsiding to a large extent you are seeing a, a brief rally in the euro okay looking at a 60 minute chart you are now into resistance though so watch out for the euro in terms of resistance here at 1.18 if that were to crack then obviously we're going to we're going to move lower okay again certainly yeah, if, if we do hold support here uh, and certainly look to potentially move higher, then obviously that doesn't bode well for the Eurozone at all. Okay, let's just bring up the chart of the bonds. Let's see exactly where the bonds are, see exactly where the trading. Now, the bonds at present certainly holding resistance as well. So, basically, what it's telling you here is that bonds certainly want to potentially move lower, even though we have a talk of QE, etc., uh, in the UK to a large extent. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard and very unlikely to see that certainly uh, reciprocate and reverberate in the. Uh, in the European session at present, it's more of a wait and see mode, a wait and see stance. And you can certainly see that reflected in the euro bond as well. So, again, if the bonds were to move lower, it sends the yields higher. And that, in turn, obviously sends the euro higher as well. So, certainly something to consider and certainly to watch something to watch out for. But certainly into resistance on the bonds. So, therefore, you're looking for a potential pop in the euro, especially given the fact that uh, we've certainly alleviated the concerns with regards to Brexit to a large extent with this equity market rally. Okay. The Shanghai Daily, at the moment, there is an inverted head and shoulders formation, so I just need to be cognizant of that uh, and see exactly how the markets re react to that as well. Uh, okay. Bring up chart of sterling. Okay, so bring up a chart of sterling on the daily chart perspective. You're still uh, basically um, oscillating in that lower region. You can see how the pound has certainly fallen on the back of Mr. Carney's comments, of uh, well, bullish comments. And that certainly is being reflected in the actual currency itself, as you can see, making and testing those lows, potentially looking to even move even lower. Okay, that's basically the situation. Okay, again, watch out for that gap fill above at 1.1370. If the market does start to rally, if we see a move in the bonds move lower, okay, due to lack of conviction or for, for, for and generally risk aversion as well. I mean, general uh, risk embrace being risk being embraced. Sorry. When you have risk aversion, money flows towards bonds, okay, and that's exactly what was happening, hence the rise of my, the price of the bonds. The bonds were certainly moving higher, uh, and that certainly will be a factor as well. So again, watch out for that concern, okay? And that obviously sends the euro higher, given the fact that they've certainly restored faith, and that obviously can hurt European equities going forward, and that's one of the reasons why you are potentially lagging in European indices, okay? Again, unfortunately, you're being helped by the uh, currency debauchery, and obviously you promise more stimulus, so... Certainly interesting times, interesting times to say the least, okay? Okay, right, so certainly into uh, support here on the uh, sterling and potentially looking to break even lower, okay? In terms of the, let's see what we've missed here. Let's just bring up the Aussie and Kiwi quickly before I finish. So if I bring up the chart of the Aussie. Where is, oh, oh, there we are, Aussie USD. Okay, so daily chart, the Aussie USD coming into potential resistance now. Okay, so you're looking at exhaustion on the Aussie USD. Again, you have this uh, resistance line here. Use your Fibonacci retracement tool of high to low. And you can clearly see that we have this perfect HNS formation being carved out on the Aussie. Okay, so right shoulder is going in now. We're into that Fib 50% and certainly looking to, uh, to move lower on the Aussie USD, which in turn will may more, more than likely send the, uh, 
the actual uh, commodities lower and send the FTSE 100 lower as well. This is going to be very interesting to see uh, how the uh, Aussie USD reacts. Now, we have had news uh, uh, with regards to the potential election in Australia. Again, it'll be interesting how the markets react to the election. And we'll see exactly how that unfolds as well. Okay. But well, certainly a potential bearish factor for the Aussie USD, from my perspective, is very, a very bearish uh, setup. Okay, in terms of the uh, chart, the Kiwi, let's bring the chart, the Kiwi for you. Kiwi certainly has pushed higher, regardless. Uh, again, there's a H&S formation on the daily chart brewing, provided we can remain below that uh, that right shoulder. So if I take the pivot high, take it to the pivot low, we're into that Fib 61% at the moment. Go to a four hour chart. And again, we're into that potential resistance, and there's certainly a, an area of argument for a HNS reversal or move lower. Okay, again, given the currency debauchery, etc., uh, it may well certainly push it lower. Okay, uh, again, look for dollar strength uh, as well. Okay, so again, given the uncertainty and the fear that may well um, obviously uh, dominate. Okay, certainly we'll see money potentially flowing back into the uh, the US dollar as well. So. Again, let's certainly take that into consideration. So if we bring the US dollar chart for you. Here we go. Okay, so US dollar chart on the daily perspective. It certainly has exhausted itself in the daily and is still looking to the potential close that gap below. But can we close the gap with Brexit uncertainty in the background? It certainly seems very unreal and very unrealistic. Okay, but for now, you do certainly have support here and down here. So if we do move lower, then you have potential support zones below and watch out for those support zones. Okay, folks. If the dollar starts to move lower quite substantially that's obviously if we continue to get brexit concerns alleviated although they are several headlines on the weekend that certainly are risk uh, off okay so it'll be interesting to see how the market responds and reacts okay that certainly is the situation for now okay uh, i think that should be sufficient for an insight i mean i can certainly go and look at the sectors but then this video has already been long enough be sure to visit straight straight cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the 25 percent bonus goodbye